What's up guys, my name is Nate and welcome to my channel where I provide photography tips for the modern day photographer. In this video, we'll be diving into how to accomplish a frame within a frame photography composition technique. And while this technique can be used in many art forms such as in movies as well, I'll be relating specifically how it's used in photography since I'm a photographer myself. If successfully implemented, images that follow the frame within a frame photography composition technique are often very unique looking and often stand out among the rest of the competition. And in fact, many award-winning photos follow the frame within a frame composition technique. For example, in this image by Adam Ferguson, we can see that the subject is wrapped around the tarp, which is the main framing object. The next image by Hugh Kinsella Cunningham, the frame on the right side is that tree covered with flowers, and on the left side are those palm trees as well. So the main subjects here are being framed within the two trees on either side of them. In this image by Thomas Fochelka, this one's a fairly easy one to see because the main subject in there in the blue room is being framed with the doors, causing a frame within a frame. What I love about this technique is that it's fairly simple and fairly easy to understand and use. And what makes it so great is that it's when you notice a frame within a frame photo, unless you've really trained your eye to understand or know that it's a composition technique, it kind of stands out among the rest. And this is really great if you post photos on social media and you want your photo to stand out among others, or if you enter a photo competition, then uh, your photo can stand out among the competition as well. With that being said, I'll be diving briefly into the definition of a frame within a frame, how to produce an image that follows the frame within a frame composition, why this technique is often used, when to use this technique, when to not use it, and some example ideas. So what is a frame within a frame? A frame within a frame is a composition technique that places a subject within a framing object within the main frame. Before taking a closer look at this definition, it's important that you first understand what a frame is, which is a structure or enclosing that surrounds or encloses something. In order to better understand this definition, let's dissect this definition, starting first with the first part of what a photography composition is. A photography composition technique is a technique that an artist uses to compose their image or work of art, usually following techniques that have been proven to be aesthetically pleasing to the viewer. There are many photography composition techniques, and a frame within a frame is just one of them. In fact, I created a video on 30 photography composition techniques that you should definitely check out. The next part of our sentence deals with placing a subject within a framing object. Within any image, there is usually a subject or main focal point that the viewer should be drawn to or else the image is lifeless. Examples of subjects can include hills on a mountain, the sun, a person, an animal, etc. The framing object the subject should be placed within can include anything that acts like a frame, such as a doorway, a window, arches, etc. The subject, along with the framing object, should be placed within the mainframe, which is the framing of the image itself and how it's cropped. If we take a look at this image that I took, we can see that the main subject is my buddy Blake, and the framing object that we used are those iron bars. If we take a look at the components of this image, we can see that the mainframe, which is obviously from the lens, is the mainframe. The framing object, as I mentioned, are the iron bars, and then we have the subject in between there, causing a frame within a frame. Now that we know what a frame within a frame is, let's dive into how to make an image that follows a frame within a frame composition technique. When it comes to composing an image that follows the frame within a frame composition technique, it's fairly easy and uh, mostly requires a lot of planning and preparation in order to um, accomplish the, the technique. And with that being said, I've identified five main steps that you should take in order to take a photo that follows the frame within a frame composition technique. The first step is to first know and understand your image layers. The layers in an image usually consist of a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. Not all images utilize all three layers, but in an image that follows the frame within a frame composition, it's important to know your layers as you will most likely be using one of these layers as your framing object. Layers allow the photographer to create a sense of depth and dimension in the image. We'll be coming back to this concept later in the video. In the example that we're looking at on screen, we can see that the foreground is the man taking a photo, in the middle ground we have the cities, and in the very background we can see the mountains. Let's dive into how to identify layers in a scene by taking a look at some example images. In these examples, we've already taken a look at this photo, but in the foreground we have his hand reaching out, in the middle ground we have the iron bars, and in the background we have the subject and the back wall. In this image, we have the subject in the foreground, the palm trees in the middle ground, and you could say the sky is in the background. 
In this image, we have the subject in the foreground, we have the construction scaffolding in the middle ground, and then we have the sign and the buildings in the background. By using foreground, middle ground, and background elements, the photographer can create a visual hierarchy that guides the viewer's eyes through the scene and highlights the main subject. Once you understand the concept of layers, it's time to dive into the second step. The second step after picking a subject is to find a framing object. Examples of framing objects can include doorways, arches, windows, poles, trees, bars, etc. Anything that sort of encapsulates or frames your subject. As a bonus, if you can find a framing object that can further enhance the story of the image to create a juxtaposition, then that would be even better. For example, in this image, the main subject is the older building, but the framing objects are newer skyscrapers, symbolizing time, modernization, and the corporatization of the world. Let's take a walk around and identify how you can find some framing objects in a scene around you. To show how a photographer can identify framing objects in their scene, I went to the local beach near me to try to take some photos that follow a frame within a frame composition technique. I quickly identified the volleyball nets, those columns that are underneath the pier, and the railings up top that could be used as the framing object. As I got closer to the columns, I noticed that they'd be perfect for a frame within a frame composition. Uh, the volleyball nets to the right would also be great. And then the railings up top. Now let's take a look at some images that I was able to capture from these elements that I just mentioned as framing objects. In the first photo here, I leveraged the columns from under the pier and I wanted to create kind of like a leading line frame within a frame image that leads out into the main ocean. Within this image, I leveraged the columns again as the framing object and I framed the surfer within that framing object to create a frame within a frame composition. Here's another example image from the surfer just doing a different pose. But as you can see, I'm framing him again within the columns. In this image, I found a surfer running across the sand and I leveraged these two columns here, which are, aren't necessarily up and down, but as you can see, they're still being fr that surfer that's running across is still being framed within the image. Taking a look at this photo here, I wanted to leverage the volleyball nets on the right that I mentioned earlier, and I placed the lifeguard tower within one of the nets to create that as a framing object to create another frame within a frame composition. Anything that frames your subject will work well as a framing object. It's also important to note that the framing object does not necessarily have to be a square or a rectangle, nor does it have to encapsulate the subject on four sides. Heading up to the top of the pier, I wanted to take a look at those railings as mentioned because I saw, I noticed that those would be great framing objects as well. And if I could find a subject to place within that framing object, I could create a frame within a frame. From that railing, I actually wanted to use the lifeguard tower again as the main subject. And I placed that within the framing object of the railing. And as you can see, this one, you know, isn't necessarily a square or rectangle, but it's still being framed within the railings to create that that visual appeal and kind of that interest and depth to the image, creating for a nice frame within a frame composition. And as mentioned, it doesn't necessarily have to be anything that squares or rectangles or encapsulate your subject on all sides. Anything that frames your subject would work well. Once you found a suitable framing object, it's time to move to step three. The third step is to pick a subject. This may sound like a no-brainer, but the subject will serve as the main focal point and the anchor of the image. Knowing what the subject is will allow us photographers to figure out what other elements in the scene will help make the subject either stand out or make them more pronounced and uh, the main focal point within the image. For example, if our subject is a hill in a landscape photo, then we may choose to frame them with surrounding trees. Or if our subject is a person on a street, then we may choose to frame them with light poles or street lights. When picking a subject or a focal point for your image, there are some things you should consider. For the first point, the subject should be well-defined and distinct. Avoid subjects that are too busy or cluttered, as they can be distracting and take away from the overall composition. We have to remember that simplicity in itself is another composition technique. For the second point, the subject and framing object should make relational sense. It should be a framing object that kind of um, is natural within the setting and it shouldn't be anything unnatural that was introduced to the scene. For the third point, think about the lighting. The lighting should be in a way that brings out the subject and the frame within a frame. For the fourth point, think about the background. The background should be in a way that complements the subject and the frame within a frame. And for the fifth and final point, think about the color. The color of the subject and the frame within a frame should be in a way that they complement each other. 
The subject and the framing objects need to be aligned in order to be able to compose an image that follows a frame within a frame, while also producing an image that still conveys in motion. Let's take a look at some examples of these points that I mentioned. In this image that I took, let's break down the points that I just mentioned. So the subject should be well defined and distinct. It's a pretty simple subject, right? It's just a surfer and a surfboard. There's nothing really distracting or taking away from the main subject in this image. In terms of the framing object, we have the columns from the pier, which is a natural framing object within the scene. The lighting is good, bringing out the subject and the frame within a frame. The background aligns with the main setting as well of the ocean, and the color aligns with that beach theme as well. And everything has good color harmony. Another example is this frame within a frame. As you can see, I'm framing the subject with the sign on the right, and then the construction uh, rails on the left, creating a frame within a frame. In terms of the subject, it's pretty simple. It's, there's no clutter or anything uh, taking away from the main subject. The lighting within the image is good. There's enough light on its face to highlight who the main subject is. In terms of the background, we can tell that we're shooting in a city environment. So having that neon sign as well as the apartments in the back fit the scene and the color as well if you take a look closely at the color harmony you'll notice that we have kind of a red and green theme going on and i edited the photo to have this because i noticed that the sign in the background as well as the apartments were red so i added a bit of a red and green tint to the subject as well to kind of bring out the subject and further enhance that colored emotion In this image, I'm framing the subject with the leaves both on the top right and the left side of her face. In terms of the subject being well-defined and distinct, once again, nothing really distracting or taken away from the main subject. The lighting I chose in this framing ensured that the light was shining on one side of her face to kind of create that drama and moody look. In terms of the color, as you'll notice, there's kind of a green tint to it. The natural colors in the image were the green from the plants and I added a bit of green to the shadows and to the highlights as well to make a unified look and create a nice color harmony uh, towards that moody look I was going for. This leads us to our next step. The fourth step is to manage distance and depth. What I mean by managing distance and depth is to pay attention to the distance between the main frame the framing object, and the subject, and the depth this distance creates. This concept goes back to the concept of layers that I mentioned earlier in regards to the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. If there's no sense of depth to the image, then the image can end up feeling pretty plain and bland. So you'll want to do this before placing your subject within the main framing object and taking the photo. Managing distance in a frame within a frame photo can be achieved through the use of different techniques, such as using different focal lengths, so for example, a wide angle lens will make the background appear closer to the subject, while a telephoto lens will compress the background and make it appear further away. The second way is to play with perspective. By positioning the camera at different angles and heights, you can create the illusion of depth and distance in the image. For example, in this image, if I took it straight on at the subject, or if I had the camera at eye level with the subject, then it would look, in my opinion, a little bland because the subject would still be framed within the palm trees, but we want to have that unique look and depth uh, to the image. So in order to create some perspective, I shot the subject from really low on the ground. I was laying down on the ground pretty much and I shot up at her to also make sure I had the, the leaves in the frame, but to also add this unique perspective, creating some different angles and heights. The third way is to use depth of field. A shallow depth of field will make the subject stand out by blurring the background and the foreground, creating the illusion of distance between the subject and the framing object. For example, in this image, I wanted to frame the subject with the framing objects of the railings as well as use those as a sort of leading lines. And as you notice, I shot the aperture wide open so I could create that blurred effect in the background to create some depth of field. The fourth way to manage distance and depth is to use leading lines. So leading lines are another composition technique uh, that I mentioned in my composition technique video, but they're pretty much lines in an image that lead the viewer's eyes to the subject. By using leading lines, you can guide the viewer's eyes to the image and create the illusion of depth and distance. In this image I showed earlier of using the pillar columns as a frame within a frame, you'll also notice that they are leading lines leading up to the main focal point within the image. This adds distance and depth in itself. 
The next way to manage distance and depth in an image is to use foreground elements. By including foreground elements in the image, you can create the illusion of depth and distance. This can also make the image more interesting and dynamic. For example, in this image that I took with the railing above and the pier, I used the foreground elements of the tire tracks in the sand. So if you notice the tire tracks, they're kind of creating that S shape leading up to the main focal point. So I have that as well as the railings. The railings are in the foreground as well. So we kind of have the beginning of the tire tracks as a foreground element along with the railing to create a sort of depth and distance in the image. I believe if those tire tracks weren't there, it, it'd kind of be hard to show that depth and distance between the railings and the main focal point, which is the lifeguard tower. And those tire tracks really add that element to create a, a sense of distance and depth. The next way to manage distance and depth is by using layers. So by including different layers in the image, you can create the illusion of depth and distance. And this is what I mentioned earlier. Uh, you want to know your layers, so if you know the foreground, middle ground, and background, you can play around with these elements and include different elements in those to add further distance and depth within the image when you're taking a frame within a frame photo. And lastly, you can move your body to just manage distance and depth. What I mean by that is, if you're still having trouble finding elements in your current scene to add depth, then just move to a different location and use a different framing object or move to a different spot that still utilizes the same framing object, but maybe has a different foreground or background elements. So I wanted to mention the whole managing distance and depth before the final step, because if you have a framing object in the subject, but find that there is not much depth to the image, then maybe you'll want to take into consideration these different ways to achieve depth or maybe move to another scene or angle altogether so you can have some depth and distance to your frame within a frame image as well. With that being said, let's dive into the final step. The fifth and final step is to place your subject within the framing object. Ideally, you will want the subject to be in the middle of the framing object. This is because framing in itself is another composition technique that has to be remembered. If the subject is not in the middle of the frame, it could throw off the whole balance of the image and uh, the frame within a frame technique could, be, could feel off. For example, in this image, I don't think it's necessarily that bad of an image, but I don't really like it. And this is one of the ones I took, but if you notice the subject is more towards the right of the main framing objects that I wanted to use, which is those columns. I believe if the subject was in the middle of the framing objects, it would be a lot better and I just didn't time it right and so it came out like this. But this is what I mean by wanting to have your main subject in the middle of the framing objects. Here's another example, but this time the framing objects are a little bit too narrow. So if I position myself more to the right, which I did in the final photo that I showed you, then the columns are a little bit wider, which is the framing object, and yeah, it would just add more space to the image and give kind of the subject more room to breathe. In this image, this is another example where I wanted to use the columns as a framing object, but I took the photo a little bit too late and the subject was already too left to the framing objects and not in the middle. And I believe if the subject was in the middle, it would have been a better photo. And as you can see, this is the image that I ended up taking where as you'll notice that when the subject is in the middle of the framing object, I think it just looks a lot more cleaner. It looks a lot better aesthetically wise. And that is why I mentioned, ideally try to have your subject in the middle of the framing object. And of course, if they're slightly to the right or to the left, then it's fine. You don't have to get them, you know, dead center in the middle. Like as you'll notice, this subject's kind of a little bit to the right, but he's still in the middle. But the main thing I'm trying to emphasize is you don't want them to be too far left or too far right. Um, because then that kind of takes away from the whole purpose of the frame within a frame. You're kind of trying to show that the subject is framed uh, within the, that framing object. And then once your subject is within the framing object, then it's up to your subject or you as a photographer to figure out what the subject is doing in terms of posing, which is another topic for another day. But as mentioned, since I was taking these photos kind of as street photography and not really having a posed subject, then I had to use uh, the decisive moment, which is another composition technique I mentioned in my video, and kind of just wait for the subject to do something cool and then snap the photo. So once you have everything lined up and you've gone through all these five steps, whether you have a post subject or you're taking street photography, then it's finally time to take your photo and then see how it turns out. If you're trying to create a unique looking image that is also visually appealing at the same time, then this technique is the one to use. Frame within a frame images are great at um, 
bringing the viewer's eyes to the main subject or focal point in the image while also creating a unique perspective. So we discussed when to use a frame within a frame, but is there any time when you shouldn't use a frame within a frame? And the answer is yes. I briefly touched on this earlier, but the framing object that you use within your frame within a frame image uh, should feel natural to the surrounding environment as well as to your subject. It shouldn't be like a random object that you introduce into the scene that feels kind of forced and unnatural. Remember, the framing object that you use shouldn't just be an aesthetic element that you kind of just throw into the scene. It should be used to also further enhance the story and the conveyed emotions that you want to tell through your image. In conclusion, a frame within a frame photography composition technique is just one of many composition techniques that a photographer should have under their tool belt. Once you understand the steps it takes towards accomplishing a photo that follows a frame within a frame photography composition technique, you'll be identifying these opportunities everywhere you go. Thanks for watching.